All righty, welcome everybody to the No Starving Artists podcast. This is episode four. Uh, we have a fantastic guest today, but before that, I do want to give a shout out because uh, I have got my first sponsor since starting this whole entire project. Um, so I want to give a shout out to K and K Miami. I had a little thing, but I lost it. Uh, so make sure to check them out. They make some awesome equipment for dancers when it comes to like technique training and things like that. And I have some videos coming out with that soon. But nonetheless, episode four, we have an amazing, amazing guest. Mike, this is going to feel so weird to say, Michael <laughs> Swayze. <laughs> uh, All right, man. Yeah. Tell the people who you are, what you're about, and uh, yeah. Well, I'm Michael Swayze. I know it's weird to hear that, but <laughs> uh, most people know me by third degree. And, you know, I'm just an artist and dancer, mainly a popper, pretty much only a popper. <laughs> Been doing it for oh man like 16 years now so yeah just that, teach that. travel battle you know the usual <laughs> grow learn all of the it. all of it you know what's crazy is like uh what's really really crazy actually is that we know so many of the same people from like when we first started out but mm -hmm. i don't think that we ever cross paths until like more recently if that makes sense like during your come up and during like when i was coming up i feel like we knew a lot of the same people but i never crossed paths with you during that time period it was like after the fact that we crossed paths which is super super weird um but okay yeah, so, <laughs> yeah kind of funny how that works right yeah it's weird because it's like because i've heard you like talk about people or like going to events that i know i was at so it's like, <laughs> like it's so weird that we never like cross paths at any sort of level yeah um, okay so obviously i know you as well from like popping and from um the freestyle community but like how did you how did you get into popping what was like your driving force to get into it did you see somebody did you like see a video yeah um there's a few things but the big one that got me into it was i mean this can go into a long spiel but basically i was in junior high high school one of them and i saw i was at a, one of those you know school dances you know those like those school dances that they throw at the schools yeah. that are super awkward you know <laughs> yep. but uh i saw this guy his name's hudson stranian i still in contact with him still to this day but i saw him dancing in a circle got a hair I saw him dancing in a circle, no idea what it was, no idea what it was called, nothing like that. And he was just doing, you know, some waving and stuff and then did like, a, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was, I saw everyone love this guy, cheer him on, all this type of stuff. And I was a very shy person, didn't really have a lot of people that I talked to, things like that. And I was like, I want to do that. That looks cool. Mm. So that's what it started out as is I like, it was aesthetically pleasing for me. So that's why I was like drawn to it. And then, so I went on to YouTube, things like that. And YouTube was just barely kind of going with some of these videos. And, um, just, to, I, the first thing I was like, how do I do an arm wave, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it was the funniest thing, but that's kind of how it started. It was just like, it looked cool and people liked it. Mm. And I was drawn to it from that sense. Yeah. But then, of course, it grew into something completely different after I got more involved and after I learned what, like, how to hit, how to wave. Those are the first two things I learned how to do. And yeah, but that's how it started, was basically that right there. Yeah. Just watching this guy, Hudson Shranian. So I know that we're really big with giving credit to, you know, people that yeah, have had yeah. an impact and people we learn from. So I make sure I specify names a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um so it's it's interesting that like I feel like a lot of people's dance careers start in a similar fashion in the sense that like I know for me I I didn't even know Yeah, I mean I guess I, I guess that's the word the best words. I didn't even really know what I was doing until like a significant amount of time. In terms of like I, I like I knew that I was doing like a wave and I knew that like I was like hitting but like 
And I guess, I mean, I mean, maybe at some point I like had heard the term popping, but like, I don't feel like I really, I, I really did not know what I was doing until so much further down the road. Was that kind of like, was it similar for you? Was it like, or was it the opposite? Oh, no, I'd say it was a similar for sure, because I, I learned this stuff without actually knowing what it was. I saw the guy like hit a few times. I just thought it was cool. Yeah. You know, and then I saw yeah. him do waving and I didn't know that they like were a legitimate like style that was yeah. a style within style, 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 styles, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's like this umbrella thing that has a ton of different stuff on it. I had no idea until later on, but nobody's going to know that unless you're told yeah. or, yeah. you know, so it's kind of hard, especially in that time frame where there's like where I was at growing up nobody really knew what it was called nobody mm. was like a part of the culture so much that they even knew this stuff they were just like yeah it's just like i learned this because it's it looks cool yeah. i can do robot you know so i didn't know until much later <laughs> yeah well and i feel like we're um i feel like we're in a similar space and time too where like we got to watch like it, it's been relatively recent when um I don't know. We there's so many different like words I could use, but like a, the accountability or like the um the measurement of what is or what isn't styles. Like I feel like it, it's be, it's relatively recent when that has like has become a thing of like almost almost as if like people going trying to go back and trying to like recorrect a lot of like the the stuff that happened in the beginning of a lot of these styles. So I feel like that's a unique position as well, where it's like kind of like what you were just saying, it was, like people weren't really talking about any of that when I was coming up or maybe I just was oblivious to it. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like maybe I just didn't oh, yeah. like, I wasn't like paying attention, but I feel like it was like, I feel like now if you're in a, a dance space, even as a beginner, like I feel like you'll come across those conversations at this mm -hmm. point in time. Like the accountability to your style. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, and just, yeah, and it. kind of like what it is or what it isn't and like things like that. Well, I think that's based off of where you learn the style too, like mm -hmm. where you were taught. Because if you travel, like we live, we're in Utah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it was much different here. Like as soon as you travel outside of Utah and you go to places like LA, which is obviously is very different, mm -hmm. there is accountability but it's a different type of accountability that i've seen but it's always structured there's always you know everyone knows what's going on over there yeah. whereas as soon as you start spreading out it's like it's almost like you ever hear that you ever do those things where you whisper into one person's ear and then they whisper yeah, yeah. into the next like telephone and slowly, yeah yeah and yeah. that's kind of what it is because you take something from la and it travels down multiple people yeah and then it becomes kind of scrambled yeah and so it kind of gets confusing and lost in translation when you talk to so many different people but but then there's like the whole conversation of healthy accountability and not healthy accountability you know right, right. which is well obviously a problem <laughs> yeah no for sure and i feel like it's like that aspect of telephone is i, I feel like that's such a deep con a deeper concept than just like even now because if we think about like, I always tell students this when I'm kind of like talking about things is like, it, like it's in the beginning, like it was literally just a giant game of telephone. Like that's, that's literally all it was like, and that's not even, I mean, we can even stray away from like hip hop at that point. Like it, there were so many aspects of dance and artistry that were like, it was just telephone. Like you saw somebody do something maybe once, maybe twice. And then you, went back home or you went somewhere else and like you just tried to recreate that and it was like you maybe didn't even have the opportunity to be like hey what was that that you were doing or it just felt right or looked right um and i feel like too i like i i've, th I've thought so much about the fact that uh that's a core difference in my mind between a lot of the street styles and a lot of like the studio styles which is like the other half of my life where a lot of the studio styles were like documented and like passed down. And like, it was like, it's, it's like, I always say like ballet, like no one in the world is like arguing what is ballet and what isn't ballet <laughs> because it was so like, 
for whatever reason, it was so well documented. But with a lot of the street styles, that wasn't the case. And so then you end up with this difficulty of like, like you were saying is like when you're not in one of like the Mecca areas, it's really hard to get that like authentic information. And I feel like a lot of people locally maybe don't know that you have traveled so much. I know that I didn't know that much. And like, I feel like every time we talk or see each other, like I learn more times that you've been like out of the state. So to speak on that a little bit. Like why, like what was, what was the first thing you did that you can remember out of state, whether it was like, I don't know, was it a battle? Was it training? Oh man. There's been so many. So now I got to think about it. <laughs> um, man. Hmm. What was the first one? I get, uh... Or like the most, what's the first memorable one you have? I guess the first memorable one would be, I still remember it was the Vegas shakedown. So it was mm -hmm. in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And that one was memorable because um, I got to battle someone who I like really enjoyed as a person and as a dancer. His name's For Real. Mm. Just like a really good dude. He was always super nice. And I had seen this dude before because I know I've seen him before because I had traveled prior. Mm. And I always like, I always thought he was really cool and he was always really nice to me and then i finally got to battle him and it was like a really cool moment for me yeah so that's probably the first one that i remember that was of significance but there was other times before where it was like was out for a battle but you know like at that point in time i wasn't really doing i wasn't at the same level that i'm at of course to this day so yeah. i wasn't making yeah. like past prelims i wasn't there for i was really just trying to learn and enjoy that was yeah like the whole point. yeah but then when I started getting more competitive and things like that, that's when it kind of changed and things were, of course, more memorable because I was like, I'm here for a reason now. <laughs> right, right. How quickly did you, I, and maybe you don't even remember this, but it, just collectively on your experiences traveling outside of Utah, how quick did you realize like, oh, things are a lot different here than they are where I'm from or like, or that? Like my example is like, whenever I travel for studio stuff convention wise, and like we go to States where hip hop is um, not even more popular, but like it's, it's really like, I feel like when I traveled out of state is when I really understood the cultural aspect of these styles. Like I really understood what it, what that meant because it's, it's hard to grasp like, what that really means until you see people that like that's just what they do and then it's like okay i get it now mm -hmm. oh yeah that's a that's a really big thing i first noticed it i know i did when first time i traveled first time i was out of state there's a massive difference from utah scene and other scenes and that's when you go to any type of scene doesn't matter yeah, yeah every yeah. scene is different because i've yep. traveled this so many different states been in so many different scenes and seeing how they're vastly different from each other mm -hmm. you know i've been in different parts of california and different parts of california have different types of scenes too yeah you yeah. know so it's just crazy as far as like what the differences are it depends on the time frame mm. it's very different because when mm. back then you know, it was a lot different. And then now it's a lot different in a yeah, different way yeah. that it, I don't necessarily like, but that's an opinion of mine. It's yeah. Yeah, for sure. But so taking that point, do you feel like, because I think sometimes it feels like, like uh, battles or um, freestyle communities or or pockets of like freestyle like the the unstructured so to speak forms of art styles sometimes feel like they're not touchable by like cultural norms or things that are happening like within society but i feel like um obviously that's not true but i'm saying like sometimes it feels like that's the case so you've been battling for quite some time now have you felt and seen and like what's been your how has that felt to watch battling kind of shift just from when you started to now good, bad, whatever, but 
it has shifted. How has that felt? What does that look like for you? Well, if I'm going to be honest, which, you know, <laughs> make it try to do a lot more of, but it's been a bad shift and mm. it's, there's no way of sugarcoating it. It's been yeah. a bad shift. Yeah. That's just how it is. Like, ah, uh, man, battling is, battling is a very good thing. And that's what mm-hmm. a lot of people don't understand is that battling in itself is a beautiful thing because you're you use it for so many different things it's yeah. used to communicate in different ways you know yeah. we all know that when you go to a battle event that's not a battle well i mean it is a battle but it's not you know when you talk about from a cultural standpoint and the lifestyle that comes along with it you know it's a lifestyle it's not just yeah. a dance it's an entire yeah. lifestyle like it's still a battle yes but like what's more exciting to watch for example what's more exciting to watch third degree versus jason pickett up next you know or you're in a cypher and a battle breaks out what's more Mm. exciting to watch to you you Mm. know yeah and that's that's where the big shift has happened is that yeah like how often do you see a battle that's not set up yeah out out here yeah that's how often do you actually see that now yeah that's that's where i like because a while back there were there were people battling all the time, yeah. you know, like one yeah. of my favorite memories, and this isn't just like popping was when Slinky and Ali, they were at UVU. And I think, um, I don't know the full story and I don't want to like cause drama, but they ended up like, I believe Ali ended up calling out Slinky mm. or it was vice versa. I forgot which one it was, but right then and there, they went off to the side and battled. How often do you see that now? You don't see that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, that's why, I don't like the shift and but this like that conversation alone would take would go down a long path but that's yeah, why yeah. like well, most but, of the battles you see are just set up battles instead yeah. of like in the moment i'm feeling a certain way yeah i want to battle you because i want to challenge myself or yeah, you yeah. said something that was you know i didn't like so now we're going to handle it on the dance floor instead yeah. of the nowadays it's just yeah well and what's the the ironic part about it is like I think unfortunately a lot of people battle now. It's just like anything, like it's become commercialized in a sense. Like people are battling for um I don't know that clout is the right term. There's not really much clout in battling, but they're battling for like the social like acceptance of it or like the, you know, oh I battled. Like it's this weird sort of narrative. And the the funny part about it is like there's really no money. <laughs> involved in this space like when we when we really like that's what's funny is like all these people are like trying to exploit something that is like there's really no there's no money like you charge okay you charge five bucks for people to get in but then you have a prize pool you probably got to pay judges that you're not making any money so it's weird to like exploit or like glorify something like i would totally understand if people were like making a lot of money you know, like, I, I, like, I'd be like, okay, cool. Like, get your bag, like, <laughs> do your thing. But it's like, you're exploiting and you're like, you're, uh, you're using this as a tool to, to almost like, um, say that you're a part of the culture in a way. And you're, you're like, you're not, I don't, I just, it's just, I don't know. It's ironic. It genuinely is ironic because it's just, it doesn't make any sense. I, I mean, yeah, but I mean, those battles are still like, they are a good thing. Like, even though no, I don't they're, like how they're traveled, amazing. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, like, oh man, it's kind of the battles that they set up are good, of course. Cause yes. one, you like, if you were like me way back, I yeah. was terrified of dancing in front of other people. I didn't want right, to do right. it. Never. I would have never gone up to someone and been like, Hey, I'm, battling you Mm -hmm. what's up yeah you know it would have never happened ever but then when like set up battles started happening that's when i was like okay maybe i can put my foot in the door so they 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 provide an yeah they provide an opportunity for people especially if you're in a nervous space and you're in an anxious person like i was yeah a lot but so it has its place it's just i just wish that there was more like actual call out battles and they could be in a good way too it's like hey i think you're a 
dope person. I just want to exchange and we're just going to go rounds like me and Jesse yeah. do pretty much every time we're at an event. But I think, I think that's what I'm trying to get at is like, I feel like people don't want to do that because there's no like, there's no packaging around it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's, there's no, no like, there's no hype. There's no like, there's no anything around it. But what's ironic is that then, but they'll, they'll, willingly and like gleefully do it in a situation where there still is not any like you know what i mean like at least in like situation of like a call-out battle you're like the reward is so much more fulfilling than in like a setup battle i feel like like if i feel like if i call you out or you get called out and you beat that person like especially if there's people there it's like you know what i mean it's like that's it there's no like there's no politics involved there's no like so it's just i don't know it's a weird dynamic that i feel like is like where but i mean everything has really shifted this way of like it's opened up a door for so many more people to enter the space mm -hmm. but by doing so you just inherently like water it down mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's like I, I feel like that's just in any aspect like that's the way that it works is if you're gonna like Unfortunately, and I hate I I actually have grown to hate this word, but like the less gatekeeping you do in things, like it just it just waters things down at the end of the day because you're not controlling what comes in and out. Yeah. So it's weird. I don't know. I don't know. It's a it's a weird shift, but I feel like um I feel like like you said, ultimately I agree that they're a good thing. Mm -hmm. and i and i feel like it's uh it's an opportunity to people for people to see and be involved in something that they may not otherwise be involved in mm -hmm. but yeah no it's just it is it is interesting but there's a lot of stuff around it and it honestly depends on who you talk to and you know what scene you're in and mm. there's so many different avenues like and because you can't put a general like term on it because yeah. what applies here in utah doesn't apply in other places hmm. but if, you know it just depends on each area that you're in who you talk to what event you're at it there's so many different aspects yeah uh, to, yeah and the whole gate keep keep gate yeah. keeping thing in itself is a lot to right. unpack right. you know because it's there's a lot with that <laughs> right right and i want to um I, I want to pivot because there's there's this, there is like a topic that I want to talk to you about, but um, <laughs> uh, damn, what was I gonna ask you? Shit, it was about this. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. It was such a good question too. Oh it. oh, it, it's a, this is like a um, it's not that deep, but do you ever think that dance will look like professional sports in the sense that like. You know, we have the NFL, the MLB. Will there ever be a nationwide battle league that is like consumable and is watched by people? <laughs> well, it already happened. It's uh the what is it? The break dancing that's in the Olympics. You know? Yes, yes, yes. So you got you got that yes, aspect. True. But then true. it just depends like who it just kind of depends because everyone likes to watch dance for the most yeah, part. Yeah. However, it's um, like break dancing, b boying, you know, b girling. It's like it just barely got massive worldwide attention, but it was already mm -hmm. big. And this also depends on where you go again. Yeah. Because popping, you travel outside the States, you go to, you know, a lot of different areas. Those events are massive. Yeah. You know, and they have um, KOD, which is a huge right, right, battle. Right. But if you're talking like the the level of NBA and NFL, uh, I think maybe not. But then who knows? The world yeah. changes all the time, and people. But that's like that's up for the mass public to decide. Yeah, you know? it's. Do not... you think dance is too nuanced to be at that level? Like in the sense that like people are the sports people are going to get upset like if they hear this but <laughs> like 
Like someone who's All not right. athletic or someone who doesn't really know how to play football or basketball can watch it and still like feel involved and still feel like they know like the general concept is very simple mm-hmm. of most sports, right? Yeah. You kick a ball in a goal, you shoot a ball in a hoop. Like it's very simple. I feel like with dance, it's not like I feel like someone who doesn't know dance could watch let's take popping and not all poppers. I feel like there's some poppers that like people could anybody could watch it and be like, okay, that they're great. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I feel like there's some situations where a regular person would see a popper and just be like, yeah, that's cool. But like do a flip, (laughs) do a flip. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying for sure. And I think that definitely plays a part in it, you know, and it's, it's hard because we all want to be able to turn into something so much, you know, bigger than what it is yeah but it's already big you know it's it's a part of each and every one of us but Mm -hmm. to get to that type of level i of course it could happen i mean anything's possible i would love to see it happen yeah but at the same time it's like it's it's just like you said like people will watch popping everyone will watch a break dancer and be like that is amazing you know like they're spinning around on their head they're doing all this you know they're it's consumable exactly but when it comes down to popping and other styles and there's a lot of styles out there that if you don't like if you do robot and animation people love it mm-hmm. you know everyone's yeah. gonna yeah. like that because it looks cool like you can sit there and do a robot and people are intrigued by it <laughs> yeah. you start getting to more funk styles and with the generations that are you know in play now it's like eh, yeah you know in general but you it just depends it really depends because you never know like what about these new generations that are coming up? They might be the people that are like, this is the most amazing stuff in the world, you yeah, know? Yeah. Cause it's the whole soul train thing that when they were doing bug style and it was on TV, they were doing tours. They were, you know, they were all over the place and it, it was massive. And then it kind of went into yeah. a different direction, which is, it just, it blew up like it's already blown up more than it ever has yeah like yeah like everyone knows about it like most people know what it is because i'll tell people like hey i'm a popper and they're like oh what is that and then i'll explain to them like have you ever seen like someone do a robot dance Mm -hmm. because i have Mm -hmm. to like really dumb it down yep you know and they'll be like oh yeah i know that and i'm like okay that's kind of like what it is of course there's a a better way of explaining it but that's how i have to word it to people so people know about it but it'll be hard to get people because so here's the other thing with that is that nba nfl these sports there's always something exciting to watch someone does a really cool dunk yeah there's a really cool play yeah. something like that but you got a lot of dancers who look the same exactly yeah and yeah and then there's you know there's stuff that's exciting and then there's stuff that's exciting for dancers and then there's stuff exciting for general public yep yep so well and in i guess too in like those sports references there's a lot of, there's like very specific rules and guidelines mm-hmm. and i just feel like that's not i mean it's it's possible in dance but again then you would get this like watered down half version of you know what i mean because you could definitely mm-hmm. you could set guidelines and you could set expectations and like make it so that the public knows this is a wave this is you know what i'm saying but like the expectation of like getting an audience member up to speed on an entire style enough for them to be interested is i feel like a big it, it's just i don't know i don't know anyways yeah. that was just kind of i don't know yeah but i was just curious whole, what like... your thought was because i've thought about it before <laughs> but then it always comes down to like i just don't think i just don't think there would be enough eyes for it to reach the same level as like a professional sports team. I think it could be big. I think it could be significantly big. Mm -hmm. Um, But I mean, like you said, who knows? I mean, I'm sure people said the same thing about breaking. Oh yeah. They, they had to have. And plus it's like, they have the, so you think you can dance. They're starting to do the the battles and stuff on there. They do the freestyle dancers and you go on some of those, you know, I've seen dancers who go from like a couple thousand followers to next day. It's like a hundred thousand, you know? Yeah, so yeah. Th- it has potential, but yeah. do I think it'll be NBA, NFL big? Uh, probably not. Do I think that it has the you know 
the opportunity or you know the possibility of it being massive of course like it's dance yeah. people love to watch dancing in general and right, people don't right. understand popping but you see poppers go on these shows and everyone loves them you know yeah, yeah. it's Even true if they don't fully true, understand yeah. yeah so it just kind yeah. of depends it has the possibility do i see it happening anytime soon mm, yeah probably not yeah. but That's it's fair. definitely possible you know it's gonna take a lot of work but yeah it's possible. Anything's possible, man. Anything. That's true. Reach for the stars. Exactly. Why not? Um, okay. So pivot here. I want to talk about, cause I, I just made a video about this today. Um, I think that you would have some valuable things to say about it. And I, and I know that you are involved in some of these things in, in a different, oh, wow. um, section of dance. Okay. So, uh, obviously I am involved heavily with like studios and conventions and dance competitions and things like that. And, um, I don't know if you're familiar with like break the floor. Um, but they're this like massive, uh, like extremely massive, like hundreds of millions of dollars company that does dance conventions and dance events in the studio space. And last year, well, last year is when the information came out, but it's been happening for years um bunch of stories of abuse uh and harm towards dancers and um so they did what any large scale corporation would do they changed owners and let go of the people that were involved and seemingly moved on but this week they sent out an email of this new initiative that they're doing um where they're basically going to be policing and setting guidelines for what studios can and cannot do on stage um, in a very loose way uh, with very loose verbiage. But the general idea is like, we're going to be making sure your music's appropriate. Uh, your costumes are appropriate. Your movement is appropriate. Um, and obviously, there's very mixed uh, responses to this this uh, announcement. Um, so I want to pivot the conversation towards, I guess, dancer safety would be a good marker for this for this <laughs> conversation. Um, and again, I know that you're involved in this in a in a different section of dance, and so I want to kind of get your um feedback on on do you think there needs to be more guidelines on what is and isn't acceptable when it comes to dance um or do you think that there just needs to be more accountability or both i don't know i mean i just what is your take on just dancer safety as we move forward um in this era of like trying to resolve these deep rooted issues. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, loaded. I'm actually, it's loaded. It is loaded because I'm actually very involved with stuff underground with this. And it's a huge problem. It's a lot bigger than everyone thinks it is. It is a <laughs> lot bigger than people think it is. And it honestly sucks. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Cause I've, I've had people reach out to me that just have awful stories hmm. about people that I, you know, knew that I used to be around hmm. things like that. And people wonder why I don't do much out here as far as taking jobs, Yeah, you know, things like that. And it's because like, if you're involved with someone who has been a part of any of this, I don't, any form of it and you haven't taken accountability, you are still in the scene. And honestly, some of these people need to be in jail. Yeah, just straight up. I'm just saying it. It is what it is. And if you are a part of these people, I will not be a part of anything that any of these people do hmm. ever. And there needs to be a lot more accountability. There needs to be more I, I don't want to necess necessarily say policing, but because dancers can do whatever the hell they want to do. Like you want to mm -hmm. dress a certain way. You want to be a certain way. That's up to you. You should be able to dress and perform and do whatever the hell it is you want to do and not be 
judged, sexualized, any of that stuff. Yeah. You know, whatever it may be, but it's, it's become such a massive issue and it comes, I mean, I could get into a lot of it, but it's dancers should be able to do whatever they want and be in a safe space period. Yeah. But the problem is that there's so much, there's so much divide that's going on that's causing people to take different sides and yeah. Yeah. nobody's willing to just like, damn, just talk to each other. Yeah. It yeah. drives me nuts. Cause I'm like, I've had conversations with both sides. I've had yeah. conversations with, and I'm, I'm just, or like three different sides, whatever you want to say. Right. 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 There's so many different sides. I've, I've been in each space. Yeah. I've had private conversations cause I'm not the person that's just going to sit there and post stuff. Like I keep myself private for mm-hmm. a reason, you know, but I've had separate conversations and if some, if someone does something, you know, a certain way, my messages are deleted from that person and I'm blocked or I'm removed mm. or something. You know, I've seen it happen multiple times because I say yeah. stuff, but the thing is I'm not going to post it because it doesn't involve every single person out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's specific to that individual. I can't tell yeah. you how many people, how, you know, hasn't been a ton of time, but I've, I've banned people from events. I do. I've banned them from a lot of different stuff, yeah. anything that I do, you know, but it, abuse just happens in so many different ways and it just makes me yeah. cringe, bro. Yeah. It just, well, and it's, it's, so I, I have, I feel like I have a, like a weird approach to dance sometimes because, um, like half of my life is dance and half is like corporate, like marketing business. And so a lot of times I, I look at dance through that lens mm-hmm. and it, it's, it's so fascinating. I, I, maybe fascinating is not a good word, but it's just incredibly odd that when you take a step back, this is a, a, a really large industry. Like we're, we're not talking about something that is, you know, in a couple big cities throughout the United States. Like it, it, the, I, the concept of people, older people interacting with younger people in the frame of dance happens all over the United States, whether it's a studio, whether it's just a mentor as a freestyle dancer, whatever approach you want to take it. It's, it's, it's so odd that it's such a big industry and there's absolutely zero oversight, none zip. There is not an ounce of oversight. Anybody, anyone, and I, and I can say this confidently from someone who's taught at a lot of studios in Utah, outside of Utah. I have never been in a studio where there's background checks, where there's, to be honest with you, where there's any sort of formal interview. Um, this is the norm. Like it's normal for somebody to be able to walk in off the street, say, hey, I want to teach dance and be fully accepted with open arms without question in the fr- in the context of teaching younger in the younger people younger humans mm-hmm. and i think what people sometimes fail to understand is like we're not talking about like it, it's so similar to school like like a lot of times if you're a dance teacher and you're teaching consistently you're interacting with the same group of kids a lot throughout the span of a week and throughout the span of that dancer's life. So you inherently are going to become close with those kids. You're inherently going to know them on a level that you may not know them if you weren't in that situation. And so for that to be the context of what we do and for there to be no oversight, Mm -hmm. it's like, I I don't laugh in the sense that it's funny. Like I laugh in the sense that like it, it, it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all that there has never been a group or it anyone who's who's tried to I shouldn't say that. I'm sure people have tried. It's odd to me that it's never happened. It it truly doesn't make any sense. Well, it's just it's just man like, you know what I mean? Like big picture when you think about that, like it's it's crazy. Oh yeah. No, I I it definitely sounds get what you're psychotic. Saying. Yeah. Well, like 
because this is like a very like triggering subject for me but like yeah, i'll yeah. keep it i'll keep it kind of short because it's just yeah anyways so the, th the thing is that there's a lot of older dancers and who are teaching these young kids in a one-on-one -on -one setting or a group setting where there is nobody else around yeah and there's no cameras there's no nothing yeah and the stories I've heard would make people just like, oh, it would it would make people sick to their yeah, stomach. Yeah, you know. And I want to sorry, I want to I want to preface what you're about to, what you're saying with saying that like, I don't think either one of us are pointing the finger or attacking people that are naive to what they're doing because I truly believe that there's people that are find themselves in those situations and they're they don't realize what that looks like or what that could look like does that make sense yeah no that's that is a but, good point you know what i'm saying because 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 i think but the the thing is is like if you are in that boat hearing something like this conversation that's happening right now should make you look back and say oh i probably need to fix that mm -hmm. well like yeah because every single studio i don't it doesn't matter this is this is this is one big reason why i almost refuse to work at studios i refuse to do anything with a lot of people it's very rare like like when was the last time you heard of me having a class yeah, yeah. you know it's not just because i have a lot of stuff personally going on it's because there's anyways but the thing is is that there there needs to be background checks there needs to be interviews there needs to be a probationary period there has to be cameras that are put up in studios for this or however you want to go about it. But there's no oversight going on. There's no nothing. Or there's the bigger issue. This person has been around for a long time. We like them. They can do whatever they want. Hmm. And because hmm. I like this person, because they're, they say that they're qualified for the position or whatever it may be, that we don't need to check up on it. We can ignore the red flags that are going on and we can just yeah. keep letting it happen because they bring me money. They bring me more kids. They bring me more adults, whatever it may be. Yeah. And it's just like a lot of people and I'm keeping this vague, very vague. Not, I'm not going to put yeah, for sure, for sure, anything for sure. or anyone on blast, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's like there should be a lot of this stuff going on because the there's a huge it's just a huge problem and the yeah, reason yeah like this could be a conversation that could happen for hours and hours and i've had conversations about this very specific subject for four or five hours with different individuals because yeah, of how yeah. big of a problem it actually is but then it gets swept under the rug or they get protected by certain people yeah. or whatever it may be and it's just like you know like we had like for example, we had a situation a while ago where the person was dealt with in a significant way. And that needs to happen more often. Yeah. Where people are dealt with. And and I'm not saying like attacked or, you know, like physically beaten up, even though I want to hit some of these people very badly <laughs> and physically. Ugh. But anyways... There just has to be more accountability, man. There yeah, has to be yeah. more of it. There has to be more like, and here's the biggest thing. Listen to the kids. If the kid yeah, is uncomfortable, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If well, the kid is uncomfortable, it doesn't matter. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's 100%. because it's not just, Ooh, it's not just the teacher thinking that it's okay. Even if the teacher is naive or whatever and yeah. goes along with it, if someone says, Hey, from an outside view, hey, that makes me uncomfortable. Or if yeah, the kid yeah. themselves, especially the kid, because a lot of kids don't understand, but if the kid is saying something, which kids have, and they're saying, this makes me uncomfortable and they're speaking about yeah. it to their parents and stuff like that, you need to address that. Yeah, yeah. Right away. And 100%. because like, that's why, um, like, oh yeah. But it's like, because this, well, this is causing lifelong damage. It's not just a short period. The kid isn't no. going to get over this. No, it's not gonna be like, oh, this happened this day. They're gonna remember that moment 
of whatever it is that happened or yeah. the time period where they don't understand but when they grow up they're gonna be like oh this was yeah. happening this is gonna affect them for a lifetime this isn't a short time period that's the crazy thing about dance in particular too is that in these cases of abuse it's happening in one of two situations either a it's somebody that you have known for most likely a significant amount of time and you have come to trust and look up to and admire or B, someone that you maybe don't know, but you've admired and look up to from afar. And that in itself is such a powerful situation that when it flips, it's even, I don't want to say more so, like I I really want to be careful about words because I don't don't want to um, come off in any sort of way, but it, it's just, it affects that person, like you said, so much more than, than I think what people maybe understand. Um, and the other thing is for people listening, like I, 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 um, I don't want to, this is not millions of people that watch my content, but the people that do watch my content are, are teachers and dancers and studio owners. And I, I do want to make it clear that because this is also something that doesn't happen is these conversations don't happen in studios. Um, meaning like I have never once been in a studio where a teacher has sat down a group of kids and said, Hey, you know, we're traveling to this competition this weekend, or we're traveling to this convention. If anything happens, you need to tell me or another teacher or another adult, like these conversations, these types of conversations are not happening. Kids are not being, um, warned is such a weird word to use but they're not even being educated on the idea that this is a thing and so it remains in this like um middle ground of like everyone knows it's happening and everyone knows that it's a thing but no one is explicitly talking about it until it's happened Mm -hmm. and so i also want to stress that like if you are a teacher listening to this or you are a studio director like it's important to have safe conversations with your dancers about things that could happen or situations that should make them uncomfortable and, and, and advising them on things that they need to look out for or, or, or second guess, because there's a lot of things that happen regularly in studios that just seem normal and they're not normal Mm -hmm. and they're not okay. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's just, I think like it's a frustrating topic and it's one of those things where like, um, you know, not every single person is perfect and not every single person, uh, is, is, I think should be expected to know every single nuance of every single type of thing. I get that, but there's overarching things that need to become more normal. Um, Mm -hmm. Cause it does, it just happens. I mean, I, it's, it's thankfully only happened to me a couple of times, but there's been situations that I've been put in where I've gone as a guest teacher to studios and, um, you know, a parent asked me to do a private lesson and it comes time for that private lesson and the parent just leaves. And it's like, you know, thankfully in that situation, nothing happens, but it's like, you don't, you don't know me. You don't, you don't know me from, from anyone. It's like, you know, like you saw me on Instagram and you know that I'm a a good dancer or whatever, a good teacher, whatever, but you don't know me. You have no idea who I am. So it's like that also. And, and I, I do not want to even remotely enter the realm of like victim blaming or shaming or anything like that. But it's the pure fact of like the more education that can happen around these things, the more conversations that are had, then the more parents, teachers, directors, and kids can be like, oh, this is not, this is, I don't think this is okay. Yeah, no, exactly. And it all comes down to, cause yeah, you could teach the kids, you could try to, but in the end, it's the parent's job. It's the studio owner's job. And it's when it's for sure the teacher's job to make sure that you're creating that space that is safe because you're dealing with young kids. Young kids, a lot of times do not understand. 
yeah. what's going on because yeah. the thing is, is that it's like there's people who very mm. very know what they're doing when mm. it comes to mm. i want to keep certain terms out of it i'll just use one grooming for example people yeah. know what they're yeah. doing like yeah. i like people know what they're doing and they know how to get away with it they know what yeah. they're doing and you can't explain that fully to a kid no 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 no. because no. they're not gonna be able to they're like it's really hard like you can you can teach you can like ex- try to explain but the kid yeah. isn't gonna fully grasp the concept for it yeah and so it's yeah. the adult's job the parents the studio owner and the teacher to make yeah. sure that they're holding that space because just like you said you would teach someone a private class and the parent just leaves like i've yeah. had that too and i'm just like why are you leaving me yeah alone yeah. with your kid yeah when like it's it's just like why but then i'm i'm realizing that a lot of parents and people in general feel like dance is a safe space 100 percent of the time they see mm. somebody who is an artist they see someone who uses a social media page and they all they see is someone who's an artist where they're like, I care so much about this dance. This means yeah. everything to me. Yeah. I care about my community, this and that, and this and that. When they don't realize what's going on up here with a lot of these people, yeah. they, they yeah. have no idea. You have no idea what someone's doing up there. Yeah. And that goes into a lot of personal stuff that has nothing to even do with dance. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. For sure. Um, Protect your okay. kids. They are valuable. Yes. That is our future. Like, yes. Yes. Anyone who sees this, anyone who is a studio owner, a parent, a teacher, like it doesn't matter who you are, your kids are extremely valuable. The ones you teach, the ones that are coming to your studio, your your kids, you know, your direct spawn yeah. of you. Yeah. Yeah. These these people are valuable and they're vulnerable. Yeah. And they need to be protected at all costs. Yeah. At all costs. If you're uncomfortable, a, a parent should be at the studio. If you have the time, like, please be at the studio and make sure that this is a safe space for them. And yeah. if your kid speaks up, this is not a small thing. I've had people tell me that they've tried to tell their parents, they've tried to tell people, and they don't listen. I personally have had experiences like this. It's not in the same aspect of that, it's in a yeah. different aspect. But when I didn't feel like, I could talk to people. It caused a lot of mental issues for me down the road that I'm still dealing with to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Because of people not listening to me. And this is the same stuff that's happening to these kids. Yeah. So we just got to make sure. And if you see it, say something like a hundred percent. Yeah. And I think too, like the last thing that I would say on the topic is like, if you're, if you're a younger if you're a dancer who's 16, 17, 18, and you're transitioning into teaching or you're making those strides towards that being your goal, one, if you are a director or a, 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 a teacher of one of those students, help them. Help them. And if you are one of those students who that's your goal, which is an amazing goal to have, and and you get thrown into those spaces, 16, 17, 18, seek out help because I can speak from my experience and it's a weird dynamic when you're 16 teaching 16 year olds. It's a very, very weird dynamic. And I think that it's important because, and I'm the reason I'm saying this is because especially in Utah, a lot of studios do this and I get it. You know, you grow a dancer, that's their goal. You want to transition them into teaching, but the problem is, is when that teacher or student is not given guidance, that's a hard space to navigate as a person. And that, I think, not always, but I think that that tends to lead to issues further down the road. Because part of that, part that is part of this whole situation is like, these individuals, these, these people that are doing these damaging things to students, a lot of times see their students at the same level as themselves. And so, um, that would be my last topic on this again, for like Swayze said, for, for anybody listening that is in 
the realm of dance, like, see, like seek help from people older than you that are positive knowledgeable sources um and don't just fly blind into this this space and um yeah 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 just listen listen to the kids man yeah 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 um yeah it's crazy that's a deep subject it it is yeah, yeah. it is and i think it's like I, again i think it's hard for people to talk about because I think that like when you, when you talk about things like that, rational, uh, the rational people who have those conversations, you think back and you think back and you say like, man, did I ever do something that could have affected somebody or, um, you know, was this situation out of line? Like, mm -hmm. and so I feel like that's partially what makes it so hard is because then you, rightfully so self-reflect on all the things that you've done in your life and it's like man i maybe i could have done better in this area or this situation or this thing and so i think that's a lot of times why people don't want to have these conversations is <laughs> is the fear of like them thinking back on a situation and being like damn that was not that was not cool you know mm -hmm. um but then it's like that's a good thing though yeah, because no, if you, if 100, you, yeah, hundred percent. If, if you're in that space where like, like you have to think back and and think, if you're in that mindset where you're like, because I've I've been in the same boat where yeah. I've been like, oh, did I do anything in my past that could have like upset someone? Yeah, that's a good space to be in because you can realize because it's not just the abuse you know thing. It's like a word could be said that affects someone. Yeah, Everyone has 100%. a different type of trigger, right? hundred percent. And that's why you just got to be like really careful with certain people. And of course you'd know how blunt I can be. Yeah. That's why yeah, I have no problem yeah. talking about stuff like this, but you know, um, it just depends. Each person is different. Each yeah. student is different. Yeah. Everything is different, but what you can self reflect and ask yourself, is there anything that happened in the past that I did that could have affected someone in a negative way? Yeah that's a good space to be in because yep. you're self-reflecting on yourself. And that usually means, usually means that you're a good person who actually cares about other people. If you never yeah, get in that yeah. headspace, you're never thinking about that yourself. Yeah. That person's probably, I just probably doing stuff that they know they shouldn't be doing. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not in that headspace, because if you're yeah. in that headspace, that means you're trying to do good or yeah. you are yeah. doing good. And yeah. And I think, it, I think it allows you to become a better human individual like it 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 allows you to become the best version of yourself and the best kind of um because as you said i mean there's no matter how um if we're talking dance specifically no matter how amazing of a teacher you are no matter how ethical and correct you will probably come across someone that you will say something and they will get upset triggered offended whatever it's just, that's just the nature of just humans in general. So I think it's like the more situations that you can reflect on, the more you can better yourself to the point where you're limiting those situations and you're limiting those times when you're affecting people in a way that maybe you don't want them to be affected. Um, 100%. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, where do, where do you, if you got time, I got I got time. Dude, where, I got all the time. Where where do you want to go? Where should we go? Where do I want to go? That's up to you. I mean, like we can. What's go like stones. forefront of your mind right now? Like like within dance, what's like? What have you been thinking about recently? Dude, the safe space has been a huge yeah thing on yeah. my mind. That's been a huge thing, but it's not yeah. just the safe space that everyone talks about. There's so much underlying stuff that happens within that, but then there's also like. I think about the training aspect as well, where people always hit me up with like, Hey, I want to take a class from you. I'm like, okay, when bet, you know, mm. and then never comes through or like I end up being busy and then they never hit me up again. And I'm like, yeah. man, I'm a busy dude. Like yeah. I don't have time for myself a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, I'll go, I'll go crazy on that. We can go there. I'll go crazy we, we on that. Can go there. I mean, we can this, go there. We can go there. Let, let me give you, let me give you give me my drop and then you, uh, you go. Okay. My thing is like, I hate this. I hate saying things like this because it makes me feel 
like such an adult. Like it makes me <laughs> feel like such an old an old head, and I'm not that old. But I I I I've been hesitant to make this for sure claim, but I'm gonna make it. Okay. People Careful right now. now are lazy as hell. S- like, like be like it's it's beyond the point of like. And I don't I don't even like I don't think it has anything to do with like politics. I don't even I don't I don't think it has anything to do with anything. I think it's just that for some reason, we are in this era where it's like everybody wants to do a million things and be good at nothing. Like, that's what I really think it boils down to is like everybody wants to be like have like side hustles and like all this stuff and be good at nothing. And it's like, I don't I don't know. I just I just I guess like I've always been a competitive person. So maybe that's why, like, it's hard for me to wrap my head around. But it's like I wanted to be good at dance. Like I wanted to walk into the room specifically with choreography like because that's really where my like focus was when i was younger Mm -hmm. i wanted to be able to go into a room and be the best person in that room oh yeah and i wanted it to be clear like i wanted everybody else in the room to be like oh that's the best person and i feel like now and i don't i don't know if it's so it's such an easy topic to say that it's like social media's fault um because it just feels like it's it's more complex than that. Like I feel like you can, you can want to make content and want to have followers or whatever it is and still like push yourself to be really good. And I don't know. I don't know. And I think like you, like you said, you see it with people wanting to train and I see it with like, I'll see people post till the sun comes up about how they want to be a dance teacher and they want to make money from dance. And then when they're presented with opportunities, it's too far. Uh, it's too much time. Um, they don't want to do that specific thing. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a very, very weird space. And I, it, it really makes me feel old because it's like kind of the first thing in my life where I felt like I'm, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I understand it from different aspects, of course, but I get 100% what you're saying. I mean, you're dealing with, you have several different reasons as to why people aren't necessarily growing in their style or doing certain things. You have the too much positivity Mm. where they're like, because if you're constantly told you're good, don't change, do you like keep Mm. going with that? Most of the time, the person is going to push my push themselves because I I'll tell you this. When, like way back, of course I'd handle it differently now. Yeah, just to be clear. But yep. when someone told me my round was shit, or you danced bad, or so on and so forth, that made me like I gotta push harder. Mm. I gotta I gotta go back and I gotta train. However, you can't really say that as much these days because you have to be careful with your wording. And it depends on the person as well, because some people that would never help them. Yep. So it also depends on the individual person. That's why I never use general terms for things because it's wrong. Because like for me back then, if someone was like that round was bad, I'd be like, OK, I really got to like work, yeah. you know, or when yeah. I go to a battle and I'd lose when I go when I would go to a battle and I would lose. And this actually is to this day, if I lose a battle, which happens a lot. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, I haven't yeah. battled a ton recently, you know, but I'm mostly judged. But when I lose, that's a learning experience for me. That's like I am not pushing hard enough. Like mm. how much that train? Because I've seen. Of course, not naming names, but I see people that are that message me and like, can you tell me why I'm not making it past prelims? Can yeah. you tell me why I'm not getting to this level? And I and I always ask these people, how much are you training? How much time and effort do you actually put into this? Are you waiting for someone to hold your hand and guide you through it? Mm. Like we, me, for example, because I don't know your personal experience with your learning coming up. Yeah. yeah. But with me specifically, I did not have 
set dance teachers. Yeah. You know, I didn't have someone I went to all the time that was like one on one. Okay. So you understand. Yep. But the thing was, is that like I trained forever. People always ask, why are your hits so big all the time? Why, how does it look that good? I'm like, do you have any idea how much time I have spent on just the actual pop inside of popping? Yeah. Like I would spend hours on it a day to get it down. And that's when I ask these people, like, because, like, how much are you training? And then are you training right? Things like that. But even if you're just training for a good amount of time, and of course, certain people do things a lot faster than me. Like me, it takes me a bit to actually get it down, do things like that. But it's like, how much are you actually training? How much are you working on your dance style? Or are you trying to learn one movement? And then when you feel like you've kind of gotten it, you move to the next one. And then this one gets you know push to the side and now this one looks like garbage and this other one looks decent yeah. and because you never set, took the time to perfect this certain move like how are you supposed to grow from that like that's yeah. why that's why every single class i ever teach there's always popping strict popping and hitting that is yeah. heavily involved in it because i can't stress that part of popping enough and i've taught people over and over again where it's like i'll teach them one day the months down the road some will like reconnect or i'll teach them again or i'll see them and they're like what did i do wrong and i'm like you're not hitting like Mm. you're not popping yeah you know like how much are you actually putting into your dance style and how much do you really care about it this isn't just you know a lot of people just look at it as dance it's not just dance it is an entire lifestyle there's a culture behind it like the people who are really doing this do this every single day simply just because they absolutely truly love it for what it is and they don't use it for attention attention comes with it of course and money can come along with it fame or just a bigger following can come Mm -hmm. along with it Mm -hmm. that's great but do you are you doing this for yourself or are you doing it for other people yeah like did you sit there and you just put on music like for me i love popping music i've loved it since day one of listening to it that's yeah. why I've been so attached to this style because, of course, it all goes back to music. But I would sit there and just listen to pop and music and just sit there and hit. I'd just be sitting in my chair like, mm. yeah, you know, like I just because I loved it. And it's just like, how much time are people really putting into their style? How much are you really training? How much are you really putting in the effort? And are you even in a place to teach someone else, too? That's why mm. I didn't teach for a long time. You know, I didn't teach for a long, long time. Yeah. And then. But it wasn't until people legitimately bugged me and I got higher people than me, like much higher than me, telling me that I should teach. That's when I started teaching. So it's just it's just crazy. It's interesting. Well, I think you said I think you said something interesting because I think it crosses over to choreography as well with um, what I found is that people don't people don't isolate their training. So if you're, what I mean by that is if you're a dancer, freestyle choreography, you need to learn to isolate your training. You need to learn to work on one thing for three to six months and then move on to something else. And I think that that's where like sometimes the freestyle realm and the, and the choreography realm differ is like, that's more common, I would say in freestyle street styles of dance, especially like popping, like if you're not doing drills and you expect to be good at popping, it's not going to happen. And I think that that's sometimes where people get confused is they're like, well, I'm training. Like I'm dancing six hours a day. And it's like, yeah, but you're trying to master 15 things at once Mm -hmm. and you're getting good at none of them. So it's like, like you said, like though, like if you're not doing hitting drills, if we're talking about popping and you want to be good at popping and you're not doing hitting drills, then it's not, it's just not going to happen. And I truly firmly stand behind the fact that like the one thing about this era of dance and and social media is like, you can get followers by being mediocre, but at some point you're going to get, you're going to get found out. You know what I mean? At some point in some situation, whether you're a freestyle dancer or a choreography head at some point you are going to be called upon and people are going to be like, Oh, you're actually not that good. And then everything's going to crumble. So mm-hmm. it's like, I, I think that 
I like that you said that because I think that that's a, a big thing that's missing. And what I've noticed is like, um, you know, I used to go into choreography classes, for example, and folk, I would focus on like just my textures, the whole, and I would do that for weeks, every single combo I'd learned or every single class I took, it was just textures. And then once I felt good about textures, it was like, okay, cool. What's next? What do I, what am I not good at? Timing. Okay. Now let me work on timing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's part of it too, but, but I feel like you tell people that and they still, they're just like, Oh, cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Got it. (laughs) Yeah, no, definitely. But like, the thing is that I know for a fact, I know how people are. So let me preface this before is that what we say isn't a personal bag on anyone. No. Like if you, your personal journey is however the hell you want it to be, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, there's nothing wrong with your personal gen- dance journey. However you want to go about it. That's great. There's nothing wrong with it. I just, you know, do you and that's fine. Mm. But like, when you start getting into like, since I'm in popping world, I'm specifically talking about popping, you know, but like if someone wants to take their own personal journey, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I almost swore, but, (laughs) um, but the thing is, is like, once you start getting more involved into a specific style and let's say it depends on your journey, if you just want to dance, you just want to pose, you just want to do this. That's great. Just don't yeah. claim it as something that it's not, yep. you know, like, don't be like, Hey, this is me popping when you know that it's not. But even if you think it is, and you're trying to do popping, I don't really have a problem with that. Your personal journey is, you know, you, but if you start becoming more competitive and especially if you start teaching people, that's when it becomes kind of, yeah. Like, yeah kind of a you know blurry area because you know you're doing students a disservice by doing certain things yep. just saying yep. but yeah people are trying to do too much and i see it all the time i see people who they want to learn one thing and then the next week they're like when i was teaching quite a bit and i was doing private lessons a lot for free by the way <laughs> i was doing this stuff for the utah scene for a long time yeah we, I'd go one week and I teach them one thing. And then the next week they're like, I want to do something else. And I was like, well, did you get that last one down? Yeah. They're like, yeah, I practiced. I was like, how much did you practice it? Let's see it when you come in. And then they come back in. Harley looks like it was done at all. And then yeah. I'm like, Hey, we're doing the same class again. You know, we're doing the same thing. You're going to train this until you can fully understand it and at least make it into some muscle memory before we move on. Cause if I keep showing you, this thing and then move on and then move on it's not gonna look good yeah you know the easiest example if you can't make this this you know just an arm wave something simple if you can't make that basic thing look good nothing else you do with waving is gonna look good yeah yeah and it's the perfect example with what a lot of people do now and again your personal journey is on you so yeah. be it enjoy it that's what dance is all about is to enjoy it and to you know express yourself there's nothing wrong with that it just becomes to me becomes an issue when you're trying to teach other people a very specific style or you're trying to be a lot more competitive in a space that's the only time i really have an issue with it like but everyone else's personal dance journey that's on you do you yeah it doesn't matter and i think that's the caveat or the preface to that this particular conversation is like this is speaking to those dancers that are really trying to like get to the next level or like you're really serious about it you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like it's like like you said, I think dance is and should be for anyone and everyone that wants to do it. Um, I think where we're both on the same page and where a lot of people are on the same page is don't don't speak towards a work ethic and an involvement that you want and not actually be about that work ethic and involvement. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you think about? Uh, I don't I'm not even going to remember his freaking name. <laughs> there was the that uh social media dancer i'm really trying to think of his name and he did that ad i think it was like a milk commercial and he was labeled as like a popper did you see this i don't think so forget about it can't remember Uh, dude's name but i mean it's i guess the broader question is like how do you feel about like um i i think there is this like subculture of of dance uh social media dancers who 
in their defense, do have elements of popping in their dancing, mm-hmm. but claim to be and are represented as poppers um, when they're not really. I mean, I get what you're saying for sure. I think a lot yeah. of them are misunderstood too. I think it depends on the person that you're talking to, you know? Mm. Cause like, there's a lot of people who do the social media and they're very big with it. And I think, a, you know, it also depends on who you talk to within the popping community and then who you're talking about in the social media aspect. Right. Because like, there's some social media people, you know, who claim that it's popping and this and that. And the thing is that most of the time they are doing a form of popping and I got no problem with that. Like they can, they can pop, they can do some of this stuff. Can they do it at a crazy high level and battle and stuff like that? Is it good enough where they can teach the basics? Probably. Yeah. You know? And it's like, and if, if someone, if one of these guys want to throw a popping round and they understand it because they're enjoying it, I, I don't see that. Like, I'm like, cool. Like do your thing. Like there's too much gatekeeping with a lot of this stuff where it's like, Oh, this person's not popping. They're not doing yeah. this. They're not yeah. doing that. It's like, the, dude, the, the person's enjoying the style. Why are you judging them? Yeah. And the thing is, is that you see, you see certain individuals who have really big issues with this. And of course, it becomes an issue sometimes because some people take it too far mm-hmm. and so on and so forth because they're not heavily involved in the culture and so on and so forth. But if someone wants to post them popping and they're they've learned, you know, they've learned enough to like express themselves. Then great. Like, what's the difference between this person saying, "Hey, I'm popping," than a new student student saying, "Hey, I'm popping." Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, are well, you gonna call yeah. a new student saying, "Like, no, you're not a popper because you're learning the style"? Like, yeah. nah, dude. You you're if you want to be a popper, but you're popping and you're waving and you're doing the styles that you enjoy, whatever sub style within popping that you're doing, that's great. Are you gonna be able to compete at a high level? I mean, prob probably not, but it's it's popping you know yeah yeah of course of course there's it turns into a bunch of different stuff because there's a bunch of different side things and there's yeah there's times where it's taken too far into it yeah but i just speak like generally because i see a lot of like you know general where someone's like hey i put i i did a popping you know set or i did a popping round and it like most of the time when i see it i'm like yeah there's actually a ton of elements of popping yeah yeah. it's not like done at a crazy high level but i'm like cool because i like to enjoy that i like to i don't like to you know be negative about it because there's no point really in that and i'm not going to be you know i'll be a gatekeeper in certain aspects that's a healthy type of gatekeeping but i'm Mm -hmm. not going to bring someone down and stuff like that it's kind of like one of your other podcasts that i I listen to where i the the kid that or i think it was riley who wanted to learn crump yes yes and then he said that he asked someone if they would teach him some crumping, but then they said that they couldn't or w- whatever it may have been because they didn't have the permission or so on and so forth. Yeah. It's like the situation was he, someone wanted to teach him and then that um, he basically Riley was, was got people gave him shit because the person teaching him wasn't qualified or wasn't um, shouldn't have been teaching him was yeah. essentially round about the situation. Yeah, but then again, who is it them to judge who can do that right. and who can't right. do that? And, yeah, you know, and I think that the, the, the gist of that situation was like it essentially pushed somebody away from the style completely because their first interaction with it was met with a bunch of red tape and like, uh, you know, it became it became more of a task to learn it than what he was really even trying to do in the first place which was just learn it for fun yeah exactly because that's where that's where the cross comes in it's like it's like anyone can teach the the basics of something for fun it doesn't matter it's that person you know that's the thing if if you like i'll give a wave for example the basic arm wave right if someone wants to start coming into popping and someone's like pretty new to it but they're like hey that looked really cool can you show me how to do that and if that person's like, no, I can't because I don't have permission or like um, so-and-so said I couldn't or this and that. It's like, why? Like, they want to learn an arm wave. Is that person yeah. going to ever become a legitimate popper? Probably not, you know, but they yeah. can at least learn something cool that they can show their friends. Yeah. And you never know, because that's exactly how I started. 
I saw something cool and yeah, I wanted same, to do it. Same. And then now I'm a really big part of popping community and things yeah. like that. And it started with something simple. And that's how a lot of other people are. And then, of course, it turns different when you're actually teaching at a studio, things like that. So yeah, so yeah, cool. yeah. But if it's just like basic stuff, man, just show the person what you're doing. Just yeah. It's like you're the whole reason we do this is to share with other people. If you right. can't share with someone else, what's what is the point? What's the point? Yeah. Well, in the irony, too, and like I always try to tread carefully with making statements like this because I I am full fledged a guest in street style culture and hip hop culture. But um, the irony is all of these styles started on the premise of people seeing other people do something and copying it mm -hmm. um it was for fun it was people engaging in conversing and exchanging energy amongst one another um and i i say that hesitantly because i fully respect and understand the integrity and uh i also f understand to um a good degree of you know what happened with hip hop and popping and a lot of these street styles in terms of like capitalism and, and um, the whitewashing of these styles and things like that. And so mm -hmm. I, I fully understand that a, a certain level of gatekeeping has to be present at this point to ensure that things, um, you know, like that don't happen again. But to your point, I think too much completely diminishes the core purpose of a lot of these styles, which is, as you've said a bunch in this podcast, for people to have fun and enjoy themselves. Of course, that's why we all do it. Yeah. Like the whole point of this is to bring people together. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if somebody can't learn, like, do you really think someone, and this is why I got to clarify, because I know people will get triggered, but do I care? No. Like, if you have an issue with me, talk to me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, if, if, like let's say i show someone how to do the arm wave you know and then they go to a party or they're just around someone random and they want to know how it's done do you really think that random person even knows anybody who's a legitimate <laughs> teacher you really think they're going to take their time to go find a teacher when they don't even know what the hell that it is that they're trying to learn yeah when yeah. you could just take the time and be like yeah this is like Such basic a good point and then of course you can do your own type of healthy gatekeeping that yeah. i did for many years that was like People ask me how to do something. I'd be like, yeah, I can show you this. But then when they wanted to learn more, I was like, hey, just so you know, like, I personally feel like I shouldn't be teaching you all this stuff. I'm glad to show you what I know. But let me guide you to people yeah. who I believe yeah. could do this better. Yeah. You know, then because if you just show someone a little something that could create a lifetime love for the style 100%. and dance and all 100%. that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that man and like, then I and then when know. they're ready to to fully dive into it they can make that decision exactly and, and, and they can and they can seek out that information because the thing is is mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter what it is if i if i came up to you and was like can you teach me that wave and then you just like laid into me on like a 15 minute conversation about the history of popping i'd be like I'd, i i would just be like yeah i'd be like <laughs> Okay, that's like that's way too much for me. I like I'm not into that. Like, you know. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, and that's that's just how it goes a lot of times. And of course, there's a certain time where gatekeeping is appropriate and it yes. is a good thing because once yeah. you get to a certain level, you do want to make sure you're in front of the right teachers. If it's something you're looking to actually do, of course you want to go to the right people. Of course, yeah. Yeah. and that's where I think people will like they'll see part of this episode. And then of course, like everyone does, they see a part of something. Then they're like, Oh, I have an opinion about this. And I yeah, got to yeah. share it yeah. without listening to the whole thing. The thing is, is like, yeah. the thing is like, there's a time and place for gatekeeping and there's a time and place for it not to be involved at all. Yeah. And it's like, man, if you do too much gatekeeping, you're pushing people away. You know, if you don't do enough gatekeeping, then, it just turns into a shit show. Yeah. You know, but it's yeah. like, it's that healthy boundary of like this and that, the foundation, all that stuff, getting to the right people, this and that, looking inside yourself and realizing, should I be teaching this? Yeah. Yeah. Should I be in this studio teaching this? Like, there's a bunch of different other things that go along with it. And it's like, just looking within yourself and not judging someone for teaching 
something that's so basic like why is it an issue for people and that's why i get confused and people might have their own reasons that are completely valid that's mm -hmm. just my opinion don't get triggered about that that's my opinion i'm not gonna yeah. get mad at someone who can do an arm wave decently well it's not perfect of course you know is anybody's actually perfect who knows but um someone who can do it decently well am i gonna get mad at this person for showing someone else how to do an arm wave no yeah. most definitely not because yeah. that alone could create a lifetime love for the dance style and it could become the next insane popper out there you never yeah. know yeah 100%. so there's a time and place for it all there's a healthy way of going about it there's an unhealthy way of going about it it just depends you yeah. know yeah it's like what, um, if, what if that guy like what if that guy riley got shown some crump and then he decided to turn it into something insane you know like that yeah, could have happened yeah. but because he wasn't given that opportunity because of a certain level of gatekeeping we will yep. never know yep yep you know what i'm saying i know yep. that he's like a crazy amazing i think videographer right or he does video in uh but music production is like his main thing yeah but like you never know like he yeah. wasn't given that opportunity and that's not really yeah. fair yeah so yeah, yeah it kind of bumps I me agree. out because i think a dance is for anyone that wants to be a part of it you, everyone's welcome yeah it was sad you know? to hear for sure and i think that that is not i think he's not the only person in utah that felt a similar way um when it came to trying to learn dance i think it's uh I think it's happened to to many people and it's it's super super sad mm -hmm. for sure. Um okay, I've got one last like and you can keep this this one does you don't have to be super in depth, but I I think that uh I think it's an interesting topic for people and I think that they um I know for me like I have no clue. So, I know you're involved with Zulu. Um what was like the process what was the what was the first thing you did to initiate that relationship maybe first explain what zulu is but what was <laughs> like if if i'm a dancer and i'm like that's my goal like i want to be on a crew like a, a large scale well-known crew what's like what do i do let, let me say this first off i'm still a prospect yes you know it's not like i'm a full-fledged member yet there is a lot of work that comes into this and it's not easy but there's a difference between a crew and a family that's a crew you know because i've been a part of other crews and stuff like that have they ever stayed together no this one was something that i've been I've had other crews interested in me and I've said no because it wasn't just the name, anything like that, that I liked. It was the people that were involved in it that really drew me to MZK, mm -hmm. you know, Mighty Zulu Kings. And they're the most, like, they're probably the most established crew out there. You yeah. know, I know there's a lot of amazing crews out there, but, and I know there's a lot that are right up there with them with being established and things like that. But it's like that they're family based and they take everything, you know, they take things seriously. It's not just something you can be like, Hey, I want to be a part of and you're in yeah. this, like this prospect has been years in process. Yeah. You know? It's been a while. And the thing is, is that I told myself that when, when I saw these other crews fail, that I was like, there's no other crew I would want to be a part of except for MZK. Yeah. I don't care if I'm 50 years old and I'm still a prospect. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. I'll stay yeah. a prospect for the rest of my life if that's what it takes. Yeah. You know? Cause like, I'm like, I also have a lot of stuff that I need to be doing more of and things like that because, you know, life gets crazy, things like that. But this is the only crew I'll ever be a part of. And that's kind of what you need to do. That's what you need to decide is like, you first need to decide one, if you're wanting to be in a big crew, why do you want to be in that crew? What is it that draws you to that? Is it for a name? 
because if it's for a name and it's for any type of attention, you're already done. Mm. It doesn't matter, mm. you know? And is it because you actually want to be involved with these people? Have you met these people? Because that's why I loved Zulu was because I met Frantic. And when I met Frantic, he was one of the most genuine people I have ever ever met in my entire life mm. and you wouldn't expect that i was a nobody and i had talked to him and he was legitimately interested in me and what i do things like that right and it's just the energy you felt and that's when i was instantly drawn to this i was like whoa because i had i've seen videos of him you know when you don't live inside of la you don't live um in these places you think of these people as gods yeah yeah you know what i'm saying but when I saw this and it was a genuine human connection that I was like, wow, like this is real. And like this person actually like cares and they don't even know me. Yeah. And that's when I really started being like, I like this. And I saw the crew is and then I started like looking at the other people. I started introducing myself to these people and kind of seeing the other people that are in the crew and things like that. And I was like, I don't want to be a part of anything else. Mm. Like, and one, like in order to get in first off with being a part of a big crew in general, at least a big crew that does it right, you have to decide that's what you want. You have to word it. You have to actually say it. If if someone doesn't know that you want to, if they don't know that you want to be a part of the crew, they're never going to, they might never bring it up, hmm. you know? So the the crew has to know as well and the right crew members have to know and you have to really be working on yourself like zulu is very big of just not you working on your art but you being a good person mm. you know it's a lot of different aspects that come with it yeah and people have a hard time with that but anyways it's you gotta be willing to like really commit to that and most people aren't willing to commit like that yeah so if you're really wanting to be a part of something that is big, you can't do it because you want a name for it. You can't do it because you think money is going to come from it, anything like that. You got to do it because of the people that are involved in it, the feeling you get when you're around these people, Yeah, you know, and you wanting to be a part of something that benefits the crew and not yourself. Right, right. It benefits the family. Like, what do I add into being a part of the with them? You know, what do I bring to it? And you got to accept the fact that it's going to be a long process. How it started for me is, I think that kind of explains a little bit with that. How yeah, it started for yeah. me was, again, I got, I met some of the members and they were all really good people. And Frantic was the biggest one because he's the one that I, I, I remember this because I was, I was hanging out with Jesse Sykes and I told him, I was like, he's, I think we were having a conversation of like, why am I not in a crew? Yeah. Cause I, I was offered to be inside of other crews and I said, no. And I told him, I was like, dude, honestly, like, I just want to be a part of MZK, but I don't think that's even possible. Mm. You know, like I would give anything just to be a prospect inside of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, just message frantic, hit him up right now. <laughs> and dude, I, I have never <laughs> messaged him before. Yeah. Like, I don't think he was even following me back at the time. Yeah. I, I can almost guarantee that it was, this was years ago. I hit him up and I sent this long message about basic, yo, I still have the message receipts i still got it bro. <laughs> i know i still got it like i'll tell you where is it i know i know i got it but the thing is that like i had messaged him right i gotta scroll all the way up because it's literally the first message i ever sent him yeah but like i had messaged him you know um okay so this was in 2017 Oof. 2017 okay yeah and so i messaged him saying basically uh do you want me to read the exact message lay it out okay uh let's see let me make sure there's nothing like <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, so i said 
Hey, brother, with me taking popping a lot more serious, I was told that one of my goals that will help me a ton should be getting into a legitimate crew, which was true. I was told that. And yeah, um, I have always been a fan of MGK and members in the crew. I know this is extremely far fetched, but I wanted to voice my interest in possibly taking steps to one day possibly get down with MGK. First, first off, is it even possible? Of course, in the much later future, because I understand that with something like that, it would take a lot of time. If so, what steps would I need to take? If you have time to get back to me, I would greatly appreciate that. Much love and respect to you. Yeah, that was my exact message sent Jeez. to him. And he had sent me a message. I don't want to read what someone else yeah, wrote yeah, back to yeah, me, yeah, but basically yeah. he said that it's just privacy, you know. But yeah, he basically I mean, just explained that he was on the road, that he would get back to me. Yep. And then he didn't get back to me for like, he didn't get back to me for a bit here. Let's see. So at this point, you're like, uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, because he was were you, were, I understood Okay, that. okay, okay. But then he laid it out to me. He laid it out exactly what I needed to do, basically. Yeah. And it was keep doing it was basically like keep doing what i'm doing like work on myself as not just a person but as yeah. a dancer like both aspects are key and then not only that but to build with the different members inside of the crew right yeah. to be around them and so on and so forth just the reaching out is the first thing you got to do yeah. besides like you're working on yourself Man. you have to be able to do that but you have to be able to commit to that like i've been yeah. a prospect for years now and i know for i know that there's a good chance that i probably not no 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 time soon because they don't yeah. tell you like they don't always tell you exactly what it is there's that not you need a timeline to do. Yeah. there's not a timeline you yeah. know but it's there's a lot of different reasons and i don't fully understand what the reasoning is as to why someone doesn't get fully patched in right away and stuff like that yeah and i don't need to know all i need to do is work on myself as a person as a dancer be inside the community work yeah. on stuff and just keep growing and doing the things that are gonna end up being a benefit to the crew and not just myself yeah. you know and it i don't care like i said i don't care and everyone needs to have that mindset i do not care if it takes 10 20 30 40 years or even if i go to my grave without being a fully patched member doesn't matter to me yeah i because this is the only crew i want to be a part of and if i end up not you know if something happens where like it ends up not being a possibility anymore that's fine nothing else is an option for me yeah and it's such a cool story it. especially because like i think it's a testament in parts to the fact like what makes dance such a cool space is like because it's it's like it's big but it's not so big like for reference for people who don't understand that would be like if you like if you were really big into football and you slid in the dms of like your favorite professional football player and they like genuinely took the res the time to respond to you like that's the same like level of like admiration that us as dancers have for some of these people and so the fact that like dance is a space where you can have those conversations with people that are like pivotal people within your space it's like it's crazy mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy and that's that's exactly what it is but if you don't voice it, it will never happen if you don't yeah yeah you know, there's so yeah. many different things and the thing is, is like the amount that i've looked up to frantic himself is unreal and i don't even think i've ever like fully told him you know mm. because like He's played a very significant part of my dance life with just, yeah. I haven't had like a ton, a ton, like, a, like so much personal one-on-one -on -one experiences with him, but the impact that he has had, and of course, a lot of other people have had impacts on me. Like, let me make that clear. But the impact that he has had on me specifically as a person and a dancer has yeah. been insane. Of course, there's other people who have had an insane impacts, but when we're talking about Zulu specifically, yeah, it's been crazy, and yeah, it's yeah. kind of funny because you gotta be prepared for what might happen. Because when Frantic asked me that one time, "Are you still down to prospect?" and I said yes, and I made the choice. That I was like, "I'm gonna drive out to LA on this." Like this was like when they opened up their their dance studio. The, okay. the, the unite cultural center mm -hmm. like it's it's the great one Aders studio 
I made the decision, even though I had work the next morning that I was going to drive straight out, be there at the event, show that yeah. I'm serious. And I literally, after, after the event, after, after we went out to eat with frantic and some of the other people, I drove straight back on no sleep. Jeez. And that's, that's how it was. I literally drove there, was there for like seven, eight hours and drove yeah. straight back. Like yeah. I literally drove like 20 hours to spend one place for eight. And that's, like I was just showing that I'm serious. And the funny thing is, is that like frantic specifically had me go up to devious, for example, mm -hmm. well, devious came up to me and he's like, why do you want to be in the crew? And I had to explain that to him. Yeah. I had to explain that to him. I explained that to rock Swift. I had to explain it to these people. Yeah. And I had to tell him exactly why I want to be a part of it. You know? Jeez. like it wasn't an easy process like if anybody thinks that this stuff is easy and i don't yeah. want to say everything that a crew does but the thing is is like if you really want it you better be prepared to like yeah. really go in with it because there's no half-assing this stuff yeah yeah there's just not if you really want it great it might take a long time you might be in it for 10 plus years if it's what you want go for it yeah yeah and stick with it you know? yeah that's wild that's crazy yeah that's crazy yeah but it, it's it's a really cool experience you know yeah because these like they take things they're really there for each other like yeah, i'm yeah. saying like they, it's a family that's why i've been really drawn to it and even though like i have a lot of other stuff going on in my life like these all every single one of them are people i look up to i admire i would yeah. do anything for if they jumping in you best believe i'm jumping in too yeah you know yeah. they are legitimately family to me and that's why i've like gone after some people who said certain things even though i'm still a prospect that's yeah. my family still yeah you know yeah that's wild that's amazing that's yeah it's like yeah that's crazy <laughs> that's crazy yeah. it's a lot it's a lot I, I remember when like you first kind of like uh announced or whatever that you were like prospecting with them um mm -hmm. yeah yeah crazy all right, man. Last, uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, give me like your, uh, your elevator pitch advice for anybody listening out there, dancers, whatever. What's like, what's something that you feel like you've stood by and has helped you throughout like your entire experience with dance? My, Oh man, why why is it always got to be big stuff, man? Like you, you <laughs> hit deep, but I guess like the big thing is is that don't just work on your dance, work on yourself as a person. We everyone has stuff that you're addressing with yourself, and it will help your dance if you address it. Stuff mm -hmm. within yourself, mm -hmm. not just that, but truly believe in yourself and know that everything is a process when you were a baby you couldn't even walk so when you're learning stuff understand that it takes time and yeah. that enjoy that journey doesn't matter how long it takes just enjoy it enjoy the process enjoy the lifestyle enjoy being able to express yourself in good ways and just believe in yourself that's really mm. it. Like mm. work on it, believe in yourself, have a level of confidence that you'll be able to achieve anything and everything and anything you want. Cause I can guarantee you when I say this, and I know it's been said many times, if I can get to this level of popping, I promise you anyone else can, mm. I can promise you that. Cause I was a very heavy, I played sports, you know, my whole life. I had zero rhythm. I couldn't dance. I couldn't do nothing. You know, and the, to get to where I'm at today, to me is unheard of. But the fact yeah. that I can do it, anyone else can do it. And I know it's hard to believe with people, but you just have to believe in yourself, work on yourself as a person, work on yourself as a dancer, and just enjoy the process of life that you're in with growing within yourself and a dancer. Just yeah. really, truly enjoy it and believe in yourself. That's a hard part, too. But that also has to come with you working on yourself. You know, so whatever it is that you want to do, go for it. 
you know, if you never know when your last day is, as we learned recently, mm. you never know when your last day is. So if there's something you want to do, please do it. Yeah. Just go for it. Yeah. And, you know, I have to say this as well, because the only reason I know a lot of people in this scene, the only reason I got introduced to this scene is because of CJ Glover. Yeah. He's the one who saw me at a party. He's the one who took time out of his, you know, he's the one who took time to specifically come up to me when he saw me dancing randomly in a corner. and was like, you can't leave this until you give me your information. And then he's the one who introduced me to the entire scene. Yeah. And then I followed that because it's something I want to do. Please just follow what you want to do because you never know when your last day is. You never know. You never know what can happen. So you might as well believe in yourself and really go in with stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know it's a lot, but I have to pay respects to people who had a very big impact on my life. Yeah. And and not to diminish that interaction, but I guarantee you that you are not the only person that he opened that door for. Because he, that's just that's like that is who he was as as a person. Yep. You know, he he did it for a lot of people and you saw that and you know and that's what what it is. You know, he made me believe in myself everyone should believe in themselves and really push towards what they want to do in this life. And yeah. I know I can't give every single person who has impacted me in a very significant way credit on here, but I've reached out to a lot of people who obviously have had big, big impacts on me, but you know, where credit is due, it's due and it's yeah. definitely due. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just honestly, just believe in yourself truly truly believe in yourself and if you want to do something just do it yeah. work towards yeah. it I, I hated that i just said just do it but <laughs> <laughs> nike i know right but yeah enjoy the process enjoy the process it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful life if you just go with it and yeah well not necessarily go with it challenge it and stuff as well but just enjoy it this yeah. this life is meant to be beautiful and as long as you're working on yourself as a person and whatever else that whatever else is it, it is that you want to work on, it can become beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that.